then take the arms out to the sides like goal posts, 90 degree bend in the elbows. Take a nice deep breath and fill the lungs all the way and then just a little bit more and then sigh it out on your exhale. Allow your entire body to be heavy and relaxed. Allow the hips to drop open, the belly to soften. chest and the shoulders melt open. Relax your jaw. Soften all of the muscles in your face. Take a moment to check in with yourself here. Noticing how you're feeling physically. judgments aside. Check in with yourself mentally and emotionally. Noticing anything that's going on inside your head, that is weighing on your heart. Just reminding yourself that whatever you're feeling, it's perfectly okay to feel. Allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel. Direct your attention onto your breath. And start to lengthen your inhales and your exhales for about four seconds each. Feeling the chest and the belly rise as you breathe in. Chest and the belly fall as you breathe out. The body softens, surrendering just a little more with each exhale. taking a few rounds of breath together beginning to cultivate our ujjayi breath just basically breathing in and out of the nose adding a slight contraction at the back of the throat so in order to demonstrate that contraction we'll do an exercise together breathing in through the nose for a count of four seconds and then on the exhale we'll breathe out of the mouth with a audible ha sound almost like you're steaming up a mirror with your breath. So inhaling through the nose, one, two, three, four. Exhaling through the mouth, ha sound, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhaling, four, three, Last round together. One, two, three, four. Big ha. Four, three, two, one. So keep breathing in this manner. So the next time you exhale, instead of exhaling through the mouth, you'll close the mouth and exhale through the nose, holding that contraction at the back of the throat. So it's almost as if you're saying ha with your mouth closed a mirror with the mouth closed, you get the idea. So this creates a point of focus for our practice and it also keeps the body from the inside out. So a lot of the postures I have in mind today are really good at helping us build focus and concentration, which helps brings us into the present moment. During times of fear, worry, uncertainty, being able to be present can be quite helpful. Continuing with your breath, use your hands to guide your knees together. Take the feet hip width apart, draw the heels in close to your glutes, and allow your arms to rest beside you. On 
time, inhale, shim to the feet, lifting the hips. Hips up toward the sky, push into the feet and press the shoulders down into the mat. And without actually moving the feet, push the feet forward and feel how that helps you lift the hips and open the chest further. Two more breaths here. Notice if you're tensing up anywhere like the jaw and allow it to soften. Exhale, lower the hips toward the mat. We'll do this a few more times moving with our breath. If you want to add in the arms, that's an option as well. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, lift the hips. Exhale, hips lower, arms come beside you. See if you can match the length of your movement to the length of the breath. Inhale, lifting, arms reach overhead. Exhale, lower. Two more times. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last time. And exhale. Hug both knees into your chest. Rock side to side, releasing the low back. And extend the left leg flat on the mat. And again, to a twist, take the right arm out to the side like a goal post. And on your exhale, draw your right knee over to the left thigh. Keep the right shoulder blades planted firmly on the mat, and then take your gaze over the right shoulder. Check in with your breath. Smooth and steady, just as it was in the beginning of our practice. Noticing how much more tricky it is to breathe in a twist. Inhale, back to center, both knees into the chest, and then extend the right leg flat on the mat, take the left arm out to the side, and your exhale, drop your knee to the right, gaze to the left, left shoulder blade stays flat on the mat. Hug both knees into the chest. Rock forward and back a couple of times. And then finally making your way up to seated. Any cross-legged position here. You can also sit up on a folded blanket or a block if sitting straight on the mat is uncomfortable. <clears throat> Allow your hands to rest on your knees with your palms facing up. Sit nice and tall, feel the sitting bones grounding into the mat. Crown of the head reaches up toward the sky and allow your shoulders to relax downward, away from the ears. Draw your lower abdominal muscles in toward the spine, engaging the core. Nice, straight, strong posture here. And on your exhale, allow your chin to drop to your chest. Feeling the stretch on the back of the neck into the upper back and the shoulders. Relax your jaw, soften your face. And begin to roll the head around full circles. Keep length in the neck by reaching the head away from your body, almost like someone's holding your head and gently pulling it away from your body. Just so that there's no collapsing in the neck. Take your time, notice the sensation that you feel as you roll the head around. Okay, 
attention to your breath. Noticing the sound of the breath. The feel of the breath. Then go ahead and switch directions. your chin gets back to the center of your chest, pause there. Realigning with the breath if you've lost that connection. Gently lift the chin, open the eyes. Knees point up, take the hands behind the thighs. Lean back, coming into Navasana. Push the heart forward, pull the shoulders back so you have a nice straight line from the tailbone to the top of the head. Begin by letting the toes hover just slightly. Maybe the toes lift up to knee height. You have the option of extending the arms here. Holding five breaths. One. Two. Three, four, and five. Come back to seated. Inhale, reach the right arm up, and on your exhale, reach over to the left side. Keep your right sitting bone grounded onto the mat. Roll the right shoulder back, and then maybe take the gaze upward toward the ceiling or even toward the right fingertip. Inhale, both arms up. And exhale, boat pose, round two. One. Two. Notice if you're clenching up the jaw, soften where you're able. Three. Four. And five. Coming back to seated. Inhale, sweep the left arm up. And exhale, reaching over to the right. Gaze is upward or toward the left fingers, and we're rolling the left shoulder back. Grounding the left sitting bone into the mat. Inhale, back up to center. And exhale, our last round of boat pose here. Heart forward, shoulders back, jaws relaxed, the breath is full. Draw strength from your breath. Breathing in strength. Breathing out weakness. Three. Four, and five. Release, make your way to all fours, tabletop. Wrist under shoulders, knees under hips. Spread the fingertips wide, press into the mound of the index finger and the thumb. On your inhale, drop your belly, lift your chin and tail. Cow pose, Pyotalasana. Exhale, round your spine, chin to chest, tailbone tucks under. Cat pose, Marjriasana. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. 
Move here with your own breath at your own pace. Again, trying to match the length of your movement to the length of your breath. Any other organic movement you'd like to put into your body, meaning whatever feels good, feel free. This is your practice. Your time to explore your body and explore your mind. And coming back to a neutral spine. On your inhale, extend your right leg back. Flex your foot and leg. Rotate the right toes inward so that the right hip stays level with the left. Nice deep inhale here. On the exhale, right knee to the nose. Squeeze and hold, round your back, press your shoulder blades up. Inhale, extend it back. Exhale, elbows hug the ribs as you lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale, knee to nose. Squeeze, hold. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower, hug the ribs with the elbows. Inhale, push up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale back to all fours and switch sides. Extending the left leg back, flexing the foot and leg, rotating the left toes inward. Deep inhale, exhale, left knee to the nose. Squeeze and hold, press the shoulder blades up, contract your abs. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower elbows hugging the ribs. Move slowly with control, with intent. Inhaling up, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lower last time. Inhale, push up. Exhale, all fours. Tuck the toes under, lift your hips. Downward facing dog. Walk this one out, whatever movement feels good in your body here. So move your head around side to side. Circle the hips, bring the hips out to the side. And then finding stillness here, walk the feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And by the way, your knees can be bent in your forward fold as much as you need to. You can have a giant bend in the knees if you need to. Not a problem. Inhale, sweep the arms up over Hastasana. Gaze up, shoulders relax downward. Exhale, hands to the sides. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back to plank. Shift forward, shoulders past the wrists. Drop the knees. Lower slowly, elbows hug the ribs. Resist as you lower. Coming all the way down to the mat. 
Inhale, peel the chest up, pressing the legs into the mat, low cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Going to move one breath per movement here. The trick is to breathe slower and then you have more time to move. It takes time to be able to get your breath to move a little bit slower, but that's why we practice. Exhale, fully bend the knees, walk to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, arms to the sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plank. Shift forward, drop the knees, lower slowly. Inhale, peel the chest up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Checking in with your breath. Exhale, fully bend the knees, come forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms over high. Exhale, arms to the sides. <clears throat> so for this next one, if you have blocks, go ahead and take them to the front of your mat. You may or may not need them. I'm gonna start out by taking the hands to the heart and then stepping the right foot back. So the weight's gonna shift into the left foot, spread the toes wide. Fix your gaze point on something that's not moving. I want you to imagine a straight line from your right heel all the way up to your head. And then start to hinge forward from the left hip. If your toes are able to hover, you'll flex the foot and squeeze the right leg, rotating the right toes inward slightly. That's to keep the hips level. You can stay just like this. Maybe you need to keep the toes down. That's okay too. Start to hinge forward, coming into warrior three. You might stay maybe a quarter of the way. Maybe go half or all the way, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that whatever you're doing is with control and with intent. Lifting up out of the left hip. Breathing deeply. Focusing on your drishtis, your gaze points. And then from here, releasing your hands to the blocks, coming into a grounded warrior. Make sure you're not dumping into the left hip. You can stay right here. If you're coming into revolved half moon, the right hand stays down. Inhale, sweep the left arm up. Gaze toward the left fingertips. Exhale, left hand down. Drop the right toes toward the back of the mat. And inhale, reach the arms up, both legs straight. Hips point straight forward. On your exhale, start to hinge forward. Now your hands might come to blocks. You might even leave them at your hands on your hips. And this fold might look something like this. You want both legs straight. How far you fold is not what's important. 
Keep the hips squared forward, drawing the left hip back, the right hip forward. This is pyramid pose, Parswottanasana. So both thighs are engaged, the back thigh or your right thigh is rotating inward. The left thigh is rotating outward slightly. Check in with your breath. Coming into revolved triangle. The right hand stays down. Inhale, sweep the left arm up. Gaze toward the left fingertips. Feel the twist coming from the mid spine, your thoracic spine. Using the abdominal muscles to assist in the twist. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale. Arms up, and exhale, step back to the front of the mat. Switching over to the other side. Hands to the heart, right toes come, or left toes rather, come back. Again, stay in your kickstand, or start to hover the toes. Once the toes get airborne, flex the foot and leg, rotate the left toes inward. Gaze points fixed, soft bend in the right knee. We want to make sure we're not getting heavy in the right hip. So you push the right foot down to lift up out of the right hip. Nice deep breath. Focus, focus, focus. Release your hands to your blocks for grounded warrior. Stay here or on your inhale, revolved half moon, right arm comes up toward the sky. Reaching up, looking up toward the right fingertips. Exhale, right hand down, left toes land at the back of the mat. Inhale, arms up, both legs straight, hips point forward. Squeeze your left thigh, rotate it inward. Squeeze your right thigh, rotate it outward. You can either leave the hands up or take the hands to the hips. And as you exhale, start to fold. Keep both legs straight. Continue drawing the right hip back and the left hip forward. If you get low enough, you can take your hands to blocks or to your shin. So lengthen your spine here by reaching the head away from the tailbone. Imagine the head going one direction, forward, and the tailbone going the opposite direction, away from the head, creating lots of space in the spine. Now moving into our revolved triangle. The left hand stays down. Inhale, right arm reaches up. Look up toward the right fingertips. Notice if your hips swing out to the right and draw them back in towards center. Exhale, right hand comes down. Inhale, arms sweep up. And exhale, step back to the front of the mat. All right, from here, we'll be coming into squat. We'll do this from the side. So take your feet a little bit wider than hips width. Hands to your heart. The heels point in a little bit and the toes point out slightly. Then start to lower, hips toward the heels. If you need to support your bottom with a block or a couple books, whatever you have handy, that's always an option. Press the palms together if you don't need to use the hands for balance. And make sure you're not leaning over. So you want to open the chest, 
almost like you're trying to make a little arc shape in the back. So it's going to just be a flat spine, but it's as if you're trying to make that arc shape. Now you're welcome to stay here. If you're working on Crow Kakasana, which is an arm balance, I'll walk you through that. Be careful, um, you can face plant, so you, I would recommend taking a pillow or blanket and placing it in front of you. If you don't have that available, you can also use a block and place it in front of you as well. You'll take the hands, shoulders width apart, spread the fingertips wide. Get the knees as high up onto the arms as possible here. Hug the knees in towards you, like you're hugging your rib cage. Lift your hips. Weight still not in my hands. Now I'm going to shift forward, bringing the weight into my hands. Then I can lift one foot, maybe. Maybe two. And you'll see, this is where your blocks can keep you from face planting. Keep looking forward. <coughs> and just take your time here. Making your way back into squat. And then coming down to seated. Draw the soles of the feet together. How about a konasana? Bound angle. Interlace your hands, place them around the toes. Inhale, sit nice and tall. Notice the nice long spine. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips. So you'll notice there's no rounding at the low back. I'm pushing the heart forward, pulling the shoulders back. Don't worry how far you're folding. Pay attention to what sensation you feel in your body. So you're going to fold until you feel a deep stretch until it kind of distracts your mind. And you're gonna refocus your attention on your breath. And using your breath to reassure your physical body that everything is a-okay. Each inhale, see if you can create a little more length in the spine. Each exhale, letting go. Not forcing, just allowing. Inhale, make your way back up. And then take your legs wide. Upavishta Konasana. So same thing here. If you have super tight hamstrings, I would recommend sitting up on a pillow or blanket. You can also take a pillow or a rolled up towel under the knees to give yourself a little support if your hamstrings are super, super tight. Otherwise, you can just allow the knees to bend, or you can keep them straight if that feels okay. Reach toward the feet. Doesn't have to be the feet, could be the calves, could be your knees. Again, notice the length in the spine. Inhale, sit tall, heart forward, shoulders back. Flex the feet and legs. And exhale, hinge forward from the hips. No rounding in the low back.
Seeking a little bit more length with every inhale. A little bit more surrender with every exhale. Belly comes down first, then the chest, and then the chin in that order, although it might not all happen today. Inhale, come up. Exhale, breathe. Knees point up, extend the arms forward. On your exhale, make your way back onto the mat, using your abs to control your descent. And then take your right ankle, cross it over the left thigh like a number four. We'll walk you through a couple different options here, starting out at the least intense, and moving up to the highest intensity. So for starters, this might be enough. If you have really tight hips, this is gonna do it. Maybe you take the right knee and gently push it away from you. There should be no pain, burning, pinching in the knee. If there is, come out of it. Second step, rest your left foot on a block, bringing the left knee in slightly closer. Third option, tuck the right or left knee into the chest, clasp the hands, drawing the left knee in toward the chest. Lift the feet and ankles, this helps to protect the knee joint. Give you supine pigeon pose. It's great for stretching out the piriformis muscle if you have sciatica. And just an all around great hip opener. Check back in with your breath. more breaths here. the right leg, put both knees in. And when you feel ready, switch sides. This leg might be much different than the other side, so treat them independently. You're not trying to make anything match. Deep stretch in the left hip and glute area. Five 
Relax, more breath. Extend the left leg flat on the mat and the right leg up toward the sky. Grab hold of the calf or behind the knee if you're able to reach the big toe. That's also a good option. Flex the right foot and leg, as well as the left foot and leg. You're pressing the left leg down into the mat and drawing the right leg in towards you. Keep sending the right heel upward, squeezing the right thigh. It's just gonna help release the hamstring. Now turn your right foot out to about two o'clock and then exhale, take it out to the right side. And again, don't worry how far you're going here. You want your left hip and your left shoulder to stay completely flat on the mat. So if they start to lift, that's an indication that you're going a little too far. Working up and opening up the right groin, right hip. squeezing the right leg and pushing the right heel away from you. Then inhale back to center. And exhale, release. Hug both knees in. Extend the right leg flat, left leg up. Now engage both legs. Grab the toe or your calf or behind the thigh. And now exhale, draw the left leg in towards you. Squeezing the left thigh, keep pushing the left heel up. And don't forget about the right leg. It should not be vacationing. It should be nice and active, pressing down onto the mat. Continue to keep both legs active. You rotate your left foot out to about 10 o'clock, and then slowly start to take it out to the side. Watch your right hip and your right shoulder. They should stay flat. And take the gaze over the right shoulder. And you'll notice as the right hip tries to lift, that's when you can use that left leg. And as you activate it and press it down into the mat, that helps to ground the right hip onto the mat. Inhale, back up to center. Exhale, both knees in to the chest. Extend the legs up. Flex the feet and legs. This is legs up the wall, and this is an alternative pose for shoulder stance. So you're welcome to stay just like this. If you have neck issues, I would recommend staying like this. <clears throat> and if you'd like to take a full shoulder stance, the arms rest beside you, 
push into the arms, lifting the hips, support your back with your hands, wiggle the shoulder blades in toward each other, and then work on getting the heels over the hips and the hips over the shoulders. We want a little bit of space between the neck and the mat, and also between your chin and your chest. Core should be engaged. Actively reach the toes up toward the sky. Option to come into Halasana, plow pose. Keep the legs as straight as is comfortable for you. And then start to lower the toes down towards the mat, behind your head. need to bend the knees, go ahead. If your toes comfortably touch the mat, place the tops of the feet on the floor so you feel a deep stretch of the shins and the top of the foot and ankle. Slowly lifting back into your shoulder stand. And then slowly making your way down to your back. Hug both knees in. And finishing up with the final twist before our Shavasana. Stick your left arm out to the side. And on your exhale, drop your knees to the right. To the left, left shoulder blade stays on the mat. Check back in with the breath. Notice how many times your mind has wandered from your breath during your practice. One of the coolest things about yoga. It's such a wonderful way to train your mind to stay focused, to build concentration, which helps bring you into the present moment. Inhale back to center, right arm out to the side, and then exhale, knees to the left, lift the right. Depression has a tendency to take us to the past, and anxiety tends to put us in the future. So by simply bringing ourselves back to the present, we can help manage a lot of that mental turmoil that's in our heads. Just dealing with exactly what's presently at hand. back to center, hug both knees, and then whenever you're ready, making your way into Shavasana, our final posture for our practice today, lying completely flat on the mat, palms face up, wiggle the shoulder blades in toward each other, make it nice and comfortable here, allowing your entire body to be heavy and relaxed. So now you can let go of the breath. Let it return back to its natural rhythm, its natural pace. Release all effort from your body. So no more effort with the breath or the body. Just simply start to observe your mind. Noticing any thoughts that are coming and going. Letting them come and go as they please, not trying to change anything. Accepting whatever comes just exactly as it is. Think of yourself. 
yourself as an outsider, looking in without opinion, without analysis, without judgment, but simply observing as a dispassionate witness. And if you find yourself getting caught up in a thought or attached to a thought, just remind yourself to step back and leave it alone. I'd like to share a reading with you by Pima Children. <coughs> it's called In Life. In life, we think that the point is to pass the test or overcome the problem. The real truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together for a time, and then they fall back apart. Then they come together and fall apart again. It's just like that. Personal discovery and growth come from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, for relief, for misery, and joy. Suffering comes from wishing things were different. Misery is self-inflicted. When we are expecting the idea to overcome the actual, or needing things or people or places to be different for us so that we can then be happy. Let the hard things in life break you. Let them affect you. Let them change you. Let those hard moments inform you. Let this pain be your teacher. The experiences of your life are trying to tell you something about yourself. Don't cop out on that. Don't run away and hide under your covers, but lean into it. What is the lesson in the wind? What is the storm trying to tell you? What will you learn if you face it with courage, with full honesty, and lean into it? Slowly begin to bring your awareness back to your breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Draw your knees into your chest. Rock side to side, massaging the back. Extend the right arm overhead. With the knees bent, roll onto the right side. Use your arm as a pillow. When you feel ready, push up to seated. Hands together at the heart, chin to the chest. Just taking a moment of gratitude here. Gratitude towards yourself for providing your body, your mind, and your spirit with this wonderful practice of yoga. Gratitude for our breath, for our body, for being healthy enough to do this practice. Be grateful for the roof over our head and the food that we eat. 
for our friends and our loved ones. Thank you all for joining me today and sharing your practice. Namaste. Thank you everybody for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please leave um, comments, say hello, and um, let us know what classes you're interested in. I hope you all are doing okay, and have a great rest of your day.